And let's just have a second to reflect about electrical engineers and what people actually think we do. Um, I think the infographic is a pretty good summary of what people think electrical engineers do, especially the what my mum thinks I do. Um, I, it's still taken years for me to actually convince her I'm not allowed to do electrical wiring around the house. And I've actually even had students who have come to ask me, are they allowed to do electrical wiring in the house? Because their parents have asked them to. And I have to say, no, 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 don't touch it. You'll, you'll probably kill yourself. <laughs> All right. So anyway, on to why we're here. So as I said, I'm, I'm a lecturer in electrical and computer systems engineering. And my job here is to convince you that electrical engineering is awesome, basically. OK, so. Let's have a look at electrical engineer, elect ECSC in general as an overview. So, the first question I get asked when I talk to anybody and they ask what I do, I say, I'm an electrical engineer. They go, what, what, what do engineers do before even electrical engineering? Um, and if I want to sound smart, I then pluck out some Latin words and say that these come from Latin words that mean to contrive or devise or meaning cleverness, like ingenuity. And then they look at me and go, well, how did, how did you become an engineer then? Well, then I proceed to just ignore them. And then I go on to tell them that engineers are the people that solve problems. And what do we use to solve problems? We use knowledge, mathematics, and ingenuity. And just because we don't have any fancy TV shows like doctors, lawyers, chefs, or glee clubs, doesn't mean we're any less important to society. Let's say I really want to confuse them. And then I, I might say something like, well, engineering is art and communication, politics and finance, modelling and simulation, invention, approximation, measurement and estimation, too many Asian words, and more. It actually is part of all these. Um, and it actually takes quite a while to understand that Wow, you actually do learn a lot of these skills by the time you've uh, finished your engineering degree. But most simply, I would say that engineering in general is a way to think about solving problems, right? That's probably why you're all sort of enrolled in engineering. Maybe when you're a kid, you broke something just to see how it worked, or you're wondering, oh, how does this thing, um, I wonder how that bridge stays up, or I wonder how this iPhone works, all those sort of things. And that's what that's the kind of people we want in engineering. So with that in mind, it makes it much simpler to define electrical engineering. Because, because electrical engineering is most simply the field of engineering that makes use of some physical phenomena, such as electricity, elec and, makes, and we make electronic circuits. We use electromagnetism, and we use information theory to create solutions to all sorts of problems in the world. Problems we didn't even know we had. Problems that we, won't, we don't even know we have until we encounter them in 10, 20, 30 years' time. So what kind of problems are these? Well, somebody probably woke up one day and said, probably it's Edison or Tesla, wakes up and says, well, well this electricity thing is turning out to be pretty useful. Well, how can we make it available to everyone? More likely they're saying, how can we monetize this and get rich? So electrical engineering gets power around um, cities, around the world. Or how about someone who thinks, hmm, I'm really, really sick of sending smoke signals. How could I communicate with someone, say Bob, who's on the other side of the city, on the other side of the world? Or maybe Bob's called, Bob is the name of the Mars rover. And how do I communicate with Bob on Mars? So this is within the realm of telecommunications and signal processing, which is electrical engineering. Or how about, hmm, wouldn't it be good if I didn't need to do long division in my on paper all the time or multiply really large numbers um, using my head? Uh, well, that's where computers come in, right? Or we can, electrical engineers, use all those phenomena that we talk about to design electrical devices gadgets or systems that do something it might be as simple as performing arithmetic, it might be as complex as sending audio signals across uh, into optical fibres and then decoding them at the other end. Or how about another problem? I wonder how we could explore Mars, for instance. And this enters really into the domain of robotics, control systems, electrical engineering, telecommunications, mechanical engineering, all of those things, materials engineering. 
a lot of these large projects in the end are multidisciplinary. And in any multidisciplinary uh, project, you'll find that electrical engineering plays a really key component. So really, electrical engineering became recognised as an occupation in around late 19th century, so that's the late 1800s, and now it really covers a whole range of subtopics, which, as, I, as you've seen, would include electrical power distribution, electronics, control systems, signal processing, telecommunications, and even computing. So at Monash, computer engineering is a subfield of electrical engineering, and what do you do in that? Well, computer engineering is all about uh, being able to analyze, design, develop, and manufacture all types of computer systems. And these computer systems might be what we normally think of as a computer system, which might be the desktop computer that you're, you use, or your laptop, or it might be embedded devices. So you might design a whole computer system that fits on a chip that you then stick into a mobile phone, or it might be embedded systems in uh, motor vehicles, or as well as most of you know, we have the Bionic Eye project ha happening in Monash, uh, where we, you might be designing computer systems to implant in the brain to receive electrical signals from a camera. Okay, so a reflection of all that, we can sort of look at the uh, well. There's a site greatachievements.org where a whole lot of engineers around the world sort of came together and thought, well, why don't we reflect on the greatest achievements of the 20th century? And here's the 20, 20 greatest. And the ones I've highlighted in red are actually direct um, derivations that come out of electrical engineering. That's not to say the ones that are not in red don't have electrical engineering involved. It's really hard to imagine having, say, an aeroplane or having like air conditioning and refrigeration without electrical engineering. But um, the, the ones in red are actually direct derivations. So all of these things that we now take for granted, um, these great achievements, all come out of engineering and electrical engineering has a great role to play in pretty much all of them. So if you do enter electrical engineering, uh, what, what might the future hold? Well, again, a whole bunch of engineers around the world may have identified some grand challenges that we will be facing, most likely will be facing in the next 100 years, right? Um, so for you guys, if you live another 100 years, well, that's awesome. But uh, in the very near future, let's have a look at some of the grand challenges that we're going to be looking at. So we've got solar energy. There's a whole lot of energy ones there, right? Over, oops. Uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of energy ones there, making solar a commercial and economical, developing carbon sequestration methods, managing nitrogen cycle, all these things. These are improving of infrastructure and energy that are directly relevant to electrical engineering, right? Because we need to distribute energy around um, our, in, our environment. We need to provide control systems to manage and monitor a whole load of um, direct input from, say, the carbon cycle. We want to, be, want to measure temperature, we want to measure water levels, we want to measure CO2 levels. All these kinds of things are in the domain of electrical engineering. And the, these ones we can group into uh, more health and biomedicine um, areas. All right. uh, biomedical engineering is a interface between mainly electrical engineering and medicine. So developing all those systems which we might use to monitor <coughs> bodies, uh, people's health, or to influence people's health. Electrical engineering plays a key part, so you might be involved in some of these projects. Um, and over here, we're really talking about information and how we can distribute it, make full use of information. This, in this area, we interface a lot with in information technology, so IT. Um, but we also have a lot of in-house skills in um, developing control systems, algorithmics, signal processing to, uh, and also networking, telecommunications to work in this particular area. So if you're interested in any of these areas, and even if um, you're not particularly interested, you might find yourself working in one of these areas as an engineer, then electrical engineering will certainly hold you in good stead. 
Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better idea of what electrical engineering is. Well, now, what do we actually do at Monash in electrical engineering? So we're talking about the study part of the side of things. Well, in the ECSE department, so ECSE is electrical and computer systems engineering, um, the goal of our course is to blend both theory and practice. So if you've done Eng1030 or you're doing Eng1030, you'll know that um, the labs are a big component of um, electrical engineering, and that's a theme throughout the whole course. So no matter which unit you're doing, you'll probably have labs, you'll be hands-on, you'll be um, doing a whole load of uh, really, really cool stuff in the labs. So that's a whole load of training and theory that needs to be put together. So the reason we do that is because engineering is such a fast-moving field, right? So what you learn today, if we taught you about something specific, a specific system today, it would be obsolete by the time you graduate. So what we have to do is we have to teach you fundamentals and the way first derivations, that's why you're learning this basic circuit theory. Sure, we could just get you to take a package and do simulation from the beginning, but you wouldn't understand the fundamentals that go on behind things. And those fundamentals will actually allow you to solve new problems, not just the problems that we've already solved. So that's why we do that and that allows you guys to make breakthroughs in the future in the fields of engineering.